Greetings, everyone. This is Inner Truth 5. So now I'm going to be talking about the foundation of the New World Order. And so the New World Order was founded in 1943 at the first conference between England, the United States, and the Soviet Union by leading Jesuits in Tehran. It was reconfirmed at the end of World War II following the complete victory of the Roman cult controlling the Roman Catholic Church in the re-establishment of effective Catholic control of the former Frankish Kingdom principalities now known as Germany, France, Austria, the Netherlands, and Switzerland. However, the term first entered the public arena in 1949 through the work of Jesuit co-agitator George or Orwell and his book, New World Order, providing a chilling account of the future world under global Catholic socialism, fas fas fascism. At the heart, the New World Order is a defined membership of global financial, political, and industrial consortium based around the underlying massive financial assets of the Catholic Church, based from Zurich, still in control of the Jesuits and their continued monopoly, as the only organization in Catholic history, excluding the Knights Templar, to hold a papal document granting them exclusive rights to conduct banking and financial activities. As the New World Order is a consortium of financial, political, military, and industrial entities, its precise structure, rules of operation, and agenda remains difficult to precisely confirm. For example, a few dozen private banks in Europe and in the United States, first formed by the Jesuits in the 18th and early 19th century, continue to remain the foundation pillars of the global finance and credit system. The same private banks that have withdrawn hundreds of billions of dollars of credits from the global financial system in 2008 and 2009 causing what was a localized credit squeeze of bad loans into a global depression. This new world order also maintains a political military structure through cooperative ties between intelligence agencies and large private and public arms manufacturers such as that this apparatus serves to protect the interests of the Catholic Church across the world. The New World Order also represents a discrete group of global companies, principally involved in ind industries such as pharmaceuticals, as well as substantial media and published publishing interests, again, which have successfully maintained protection against Catholic interests, with the exception of unavoidable occasional public scandals, such as ongoing pedophilia by priests. Now, let's talk about foundation of the Illuminati. The Illuminati is the name given to a small group of noble and non-noble families in the 18th century that assisted the Jesuit order in their plans to exact revenge on the Catholic Church for their disbandment in July 1773 by Pope Clement XIV and the order Dominus Ac Redemptor. The Illuminati families were instrumental in assisting the Jesuits in stealing both the gold reserves of the Catholic Church and the French state through the promotion of their French Revolution and then Napoleon. It's also certain that the Jesuits obtained in their possession a number of extremely important and incriminating documents from the Vatican's secret archives during the capture of Rome by the forces of Napoleon. Following the establishment of terms, the society was restored to the world by the papal letter Solitudu, um, Solitudine Omnium Ecclesiarium on August 14, 1814. In recognition for their efforts, the Illuminati families were rewarded for their support through several means, including noble title, estates, and control of fabulous wealth on behalf of the society. Three of the most famous families and recipients of the favor of the Jesuits for their assistance are the House of Saxe-Coburg and Gotha, the Rothschilds and the Lafayettes, 
the House of Saxe Coburg and Gotha was rewarded with the crown of England and remain the primary leading family of the Illuminati and steadfastly loyal to the Jesuits. Now here's the background Illuminati events. The term Illuminati and their planned structure originated from Jesuit lawyer Adam Weisept S.J. 1748-1830 in Bavaria. In 1773, Weisept became professor of Canaan law, now being a Jesuit and set about supporting his Jesuit brothers hiding from persecution. Having joined a number of secret societies, such as the Freemasonry Lodge in Munich, in order to see how they operated, Weisept finally or Weisept finalized a new model of operation for the Jesuits in exile by April 1776. With the help of wealthy supporters, including Adolf Freiherr uh, Nigi, on May 1, 1776, Weisept formed the Order of Perfectibilists, which was later known as the Illuminati. He adopted the name of Brother Spartacus, Spartacus, Spartacus within the Order. The primary mission of the Illuminati under Weisept was to establish a new world order through the use of science, technology, and business while abolishing all monarchical monarchical governments and the Vatican on account of their support of the destruction of the Jesuits. Weisopt coined the motto of the Illuminati to be the end justifies the means. Each isolated cell of initiates reported to a superior whom they did not know, thus eliminating the chance of all Jesuits in a particular region being found and killed. Adolf Freiherr Nigi produced Weisup to several nobles, including Duke Ernest II of Saxe Gotha Altenburg, 1745-1804, who was sympathetic to the Jesuit cause and promised to send the Illuminati plans a Weisept to Vicar General Stanislaus um, Cernuix Sir, in exile in Russia. However, it was his Jesuit successor, Gabriel Lenkiewicz, 1785-1798, who recognized the value of the work of Weisept in promptly and promptly had it promulgated as the new official model and structure of the Jesuits in 1785. The Illuminati secret cell model of Weisept is credited with saving many hundreds of Jesuits throughout Europe and was used to extreme effect in the planning of the French Revolution some years later. He is the first to conceive of the perfect terrorist cell model since used by many political military factions to this day. Under the safety and care of Duke Ernest II of Saxe Gotha Altenburg, Weisept lived in Gotha and continued to write, including A Complete History of the Persecutions of the Illuminati in Bavaria, A Picture of Illuminism, and An ap- Apology for the Illuminati and an Improved System of Illuminism. Restoration of Jesuits and Supremacy of Illuminati Upon the Jesuit victory over the papacy and the restoration of the order by the papal letter Solicitudine Omnium Ecclesiarium on August 14, 1814, a new world of power was established with the Illuminati in an important position. The Jesuit superior general was now the most powerful position in the world, followed by his substantial apparatus including other Jesuits, Jesuit-sponsored banks, businesses, military manufacturers. The Roman pontiff was next most senior, reporting to the officials of the Jesuit superior general and then the Illuminati families. The old monarch families that had previously supported the Roman pontiff were reduced to less importance than the Holy See. Finally, the Holy See, Sedes Sacrorum, known as the SS, 
became a crucial legal instrument used by the Jesuits to establish a global legal framework protecting both the Roman cult first and then the Jesuits as technically a subsidiary order from all possible legal prosecutions. Whilst the present heads of the Catholic Church have demonstrated over 900 years of contempt toward the divine creator under the covenant of one heaven called Pactum de Singularis Calcem. No, I don't know how to say that word. Sorry. The entire, the entire officials, including cardinals, bishops, deacons, and ordinaries, are granted divine redemption, including the sainthood of all popes, including the church having the power to ratify the divine treaty of Lucifer and the end of hell and damnation forever if all evil behavior is seized, all sins admitted, and all property surrendered by the day of divine judgment on UCA. The Holy See Sedis Sates Sacrorum Latin Sids for seat seeds see and sacrorum for holy otherwise known as Santa Seed Santa Seed huh. and the SS also known in English as Holy See refers to the legal apparatus as a whole by which the Roman Catholic Pope and its curia of bishops claim historical recognition as a sovereign entity with superior legal rights. The Catholic Church uses two legal personalities with which to conduct its international affairs. The first is as an international state known as the Vatican City State, to which the Pope is the head of government. The second is as the supreme legal personality above all other legal personalities by which all property and creatures are subject, subjects. The legal enforceability, um, the legal enforceability of its first personality as an international state is constrained by international law. The sovereign status of the Vatican City remains dependent upon the continued recognition of an agreement known as the Lateran Treaty signed between Catholic fascist dictator and mass murderer Benito Mussolini in 1929 and his political supporter Pope Pius the, the 11th. This recognition remains in defiance and contempt to existing international laws prohibiting recognition of rogue states and laws created by mass murdering dictators. The legal enforceability of the second personality of the Catholic Church as the Holy See is dependent upon the continued adherence to legal statuses, definitions, conventions, and covenants as have been accumulated since the Middle Ages concerning the primacy of the Pope over all property and creatures. These statutes, conventions, and covenants remain the fabric and foundation of the modern legal system of most states in the world. To extend its legal strength using its second personality, the Catholic Church considers the region controlled by every bishop, a C. The Roman cult, which controls the Catholic Church, maintains that the first person to use the concept of the Holy See was St. Peter. This, of course, is impossible as the etymology of the word seeds, see, and its associated meaning were not in existence until hundreds of years after the execution of St. Peter in 70 CE at the Siege of Jerusalem. The first use of the word see was as the informal name of the forged chair of St. Peter, created by the monks of St. Denis Abbey, Paris, on behalf of Pepin the Short around 748, in anticipation of his coronation and proof of the legitimacy of the Pippin claims in creating the Catholic Church. It comes from the old French word seed and sed, which in turn comes from the Latin sedim or seeds, meaning seat, abode, and also sedir, to sit. The formal name for the chair was and still is 
Cathedra Petri, literally Chair of St. Peter. When the chair was created at St. Denis, so was the legal concept of the chair literally representing the legitimate seeds or seat of power of the Vicarious Christi. This was in direct confrontation to the legal position of the primate and patriarch of Constantinople claiming to be the seeds or seat of Christianity. The legal fiction known as Ex Cathedra, literally meaning from the chair of St. Peter, implying infallibility was not an original intention when creating the forgery. Instead, the heretical concept of infallibility did not appear until much later centuries. Nor is it true that the imperial Christian patriarchs used the term sea or seeds until centuries after the concept was created in the Catholic Church by Charles Martel and his sons. The forgery did not go to Rome, but remained at the mother church for the Catholic Church at St. Denis, where it is used, where it was used as the coronation chair for Pepin the Short in 751. The chair was brought by Pepin on his conquest of Italy from 752, providing it as a gift for the coronation of Vicarius Christi Paul in 757. It, the first time in history a pope had ever sat on a seat carrying this title. Over the centuries, many chair of St. Peter has been variously stolen, vandalized, beyond repair, burnt, and lost, However, like the false claims of apostolic, apostolic succession contained in the masterwork forgery known as Liber Pontific Pontificalis, the chair of St. Peter claims an unbroken succession of popes having physically sat on its seat, both legally and technically. If the chair of St. Peter was to be destroyed without the Catholic Church, able to find a quick replacement to hide the fact, then the primary le legitimate legal power of the Holy See claimed to emanate from this sacred relic would immediately cease. So to any further statements that are ex cathedra, no chair equals no power from the chair. Oh, great. Let's get rid of the chair and then we can get rid of the power. We should take the chair and destroy it. The most recent chair, which is enshrined by the work of Gian Lorenzo Bernini into the high altar of St. Peter's, is claimed to be from the 8th eighth, eighth century, therefore the claimed original. However, it is more likely to be a 17th century fake. In spite of the Catholic Church opening, openly admitting that the chair of St. Peter is an outright fraud, the fraud remains on public display as arguably one of the most revered church relics. Foundations of the Holy See. In 1249, Giovanni Ber Bernardone Morosini, Mor Morricone, otherwise known as Francis of Assisi and grandson of Doge Domenico Mor Morosini, 1148 to 1166, became the first Christian Do Doge, D-O-G-E, of Venice, 1249 to 1253. It is why later forgers of the Roman cult saw it important to sever all possibility of St. Francis, the Morocchini Morosini, also being the Doge Marino, Mariner of the Sea. Morosini in 1249 to 1253, in his first year in office, works on St. Mark's Basilica was expanded and the very first Bucentor State Gallery was constructed. Doge uh, Giovanni then called upon anti-Pope Innocent IV, 1243 to 1254, to give him his papal ring, his symbol of authority. Then, in 1250, upon the Bucentar, Doge Giovanni St. Francis and Innocent IV went off into the sea near St. Mark's Square's Square, and Dodge St. Francis threw the papal ring into the sea during the, a formal Roman cult religious ceremony, at which point St. Francis was the first to ever usher, 
Oh, I can't see this. Sinatra can't see that. It says, We wed thee, see, in the sign of the true and everlasting Lord, declared Venice and the Holy See to the indissoluble, oh my goodness, to the indissolubly one, thus the Holy See was first born as the first fully Christian joint business venture between the Roman cult, the Venetians, and the crown of England. Ooh, this stuff's intense. Okay, this is going on a little more, and I'm going to continue with the next video to share more about this Holy See stuff. So very technical things about that and but it's all important because this is the stuff that they believe they hold power to they are gaining their power from and it's like it's incredible really that they are controlling the world under all the specific little things like this and i i just find it hilarious actually that the whole world is being controlled by these very strange formalities and doctrines and documents that they all sign and agree upon and do this and that. And it's really crazy to me, in my opinion. So basically, uh, the moral of this story is that the Jesuits are in power and they are the ones at the very top of this pyramid of power and so we will continue on with this discussion it's going to get more intense because we're kind of going through this the foundation we're going to talk about the foundation of the jesuits the unique features of the jesuit military order jesuits in education jesuits in early trade the disbandment of the order, the counterattack of the Jesuits. So a lot of history going on with the Jesuits. And then the reestablishment and new military orders of the Jesuits. And the foundation of the Roman Catholic cult. So this stuff, you know, it's all important to know. And really, this, this should be taught in schools. Like, whenever I had history classes and stuff, it was just all foolish history. It wasn't real. This is the real stuff here. So it's good to get a, gra a grip on it. Um, so that's why I'm sharing this here today. I know it's a little rough with me reading, but it's the best that I can do with this kind of information. It's too complex for me to just word it out on myself and explain. So... All right. Well, thanks for listening, everyone, and have a beautiful, blessed day.